Hi guys, so today's video is going to be another book review and this is going to be on Jodi Picoult or Jodi Picoult So Jodi Picoult, Jodi Picoult, Jodi Picoult, I know like the T is silent. Jodi Picoult is my favorite favorite writer of all time, hands down. Like I've read every single one of her books with the exception of like two and a half because I didn't read the book that she wrote with her daughter, so that's like the half. I didn't read Lone Wolf, which was the one directly before this, and I have on my shelf that I haven't read yet, Songs of a Humpback Whale, which was her first book ever. So, but I've read every other one, and so I was really, really excited to pick this one up. So, if you guys want to know more about this book, or if you've read this book already and you wanna know my thoughts on it, um, if you haven't read this book but you're interested in it, um, or if you, yeah, but if you um, don't want spoilers, then you might want to X out of this video because I am going to talk about everything with this book and then I'm going to give you like my final feelings. So, um, this book, like if you've never read one of Jodi Picoult's books, how she writes is that she writes in the first person of multiple people. And let me just give you an example. So, this is one person's story and you can kind of see the print, the type of the font or whatever. And this is another person's story. And so the font is different. And then maybe, yep, even another person's story. This one's like in bold, so the font's just a little bit different. Um, it's told through the eyes of four different people. Um, so there's pretty much like, there's more than four characters, but there's four kind of people who you get their first person, first person impression. So you know their thoughts, their feelings, that kind of thing. And the story is told like through them like so there's really there's rarely any overlap so one chapter will be told through the eyes of one person and then you'll get the next chapter and it's another person but they don't tell the same events you know what I mean the story just kind of keeps on going on so it's told through this uh, one of the first people is a girl named Sage and Sage is like a 20 something year old girl I think she's 25 or something like that and she hasn't had the easiest life, you know, like her dad died and then um, she doesn't get along with her sisters and her mom died as well um, and her mom died and I'm not going to, I mean, I guess spoiler alert right here, her mom died in an accident and um, Sage was horribly, she had a horrible scar across her face. So she has a horrible scar across her face and she thinks that everyone's staring at her and she looks like a monster and so she's really withdrawn and she's a baker and she works at night, doesn't have any friends, she's sleeping with a married man, like basically like she's just very depressed and very lonely. And she goes to a grief group um, every week and that's where she, to you know, talk about the grief of her mom's death and all that different kind of stuff and that's where she meets um, Joseph or you later find out that's not really his name, but she meets Joseph, who's a 95-year-old man who um, is in all rights an upstanding citizen in that community. Like he taught German in the high school, he was the baseball coach, he was an umpire, he, um, everyone loves him, he has a little dog that, like a little wiener dog that <laughs> he walks around in. And he meets, they meet in the uh, grief group and then they kind of form a friendship. And that's kind of the first couple of pages. And they form this friendship and they're talking and everything like that. And in the end, Joseph reveals to Sage that he wants to die and he wants her to help him do that. And the reason he wants her to do it is because Sage is Jewish and Joseph used to be an SS guard for the Nazis in Auschwitz. So that's kind of where the whole story kind of takes off. So of course, Sage is Jewish, but she doesn't really, she's not really religious and, but her grandmother is a survivor of Holocaust. So, a survivor of the Holocaust and a survivor of Auschwitz. And that's kind of where the issues become because Sage knows that her grandmother was a survivor of Auschwitz. Joseph was a guard at Auschwitz. And so like Sage is very conflicted. Like, how do I forgive this person who personally tortured my grandmother? And like, she almost died and I wouldn't be here. How do I, and all Joseph wants is to be forgiven by a Jew before he dies and to tell his story. Well, Sage, of course, is horrified by his request, contacts the FBI and who gets her in touch with, 
Oh god, I remember the office. But get her in touch with uh, a special office that's just for bringing in ex-Nazis in the United States government, which brings in Leo, which is another um, kind of mean, another character that is told through the point of view of. And he um, is an attorney who is Jewish and works for this office bringing ex-Nazis um, to justice, looking for them. But of course, they're all in their 90s now, so it's a very slow process, um, but he loves his work. Anyway, so he gets assigned to the case, and how it goes is that you get the, so in the beginning you get a lot of Sage's point of view, and then in the middle you get part two, which is entirely her grandmother's point of view. Her grandmother's name is Minka, and she tells her story through, like, her story as she was living it. So you have a good like couple, like a good 100 to 150 pages of just what Minka went through as she was going through it. So you go through, you know, the beginning of the war, going to a Jewish ghetto, going to Auschwitz, going to uh, Bergen-Belsen, going, to, you know, like everything. All these different concentration camps, death camps, um, just basically a survivor's story, which is just heartbreaking. And, but then, so that's the direct middle of the story, but then it begins before that and after that you get a little bit of Joseph's story. So you get, you find out what it was like for him um, being an SS guard. And so his point of view of the whole story. The whole time Sage is struggling with her inner self, like struggling with this decision, like how do I help this man die and how do I kill this man? Because then I'm no better than him, you know what I mean? And it was like kind of like a very good story about human human beings and like they keep Jody Picoult wrote says over and over and over in the story there's good and evil in all of us. There's no good, you know, there's good and evil in all of us. You know, people can be like inherently evil. I mean, like Hitler was inherently evil, but there, you know, it's like good people can make bad decisions and vice versa, you know, so there's good and evil in all of us. And my final thoughts on this book, it was phenomenal. It was absolutely amazing. I read it in two days. <laughs> I couldn't put it down. Um, I cried a lot. Um, I hated the ending. I will say that I hated the ending because I felt like there could have been a much better ending, but not so much in like one aspect but in another um in the end sage does help him die but and I, that part i had a part i was like uh, i don't want i you know i don't know but it was a great great book you need to read this regardless of the last 10 pages and how it pans out this was a great great book and it like follows sage becomes more confident in herself like in the beginning she was very depressed very withdrawn and by the end she her and leo get together and you know, she doesn't mind her scar anymore and she's proud to be Jewish and she's proud to be from where she came from and I loved that. It was a great, like, um, you know, coming like coming out of your depression kind of story through adversity um, and also like learning forgiveness and learning, I loved, like I said, I loved the lesson that she kept repeating in the book, like I, there's good and bad in everybody. And I really, really took that out of this book, especially for me, you know, in my life. So final verdict, I highly recommend this. Great, great, great book. It was a page turner. I'm not gonna say that this was my favorite book that she's ever read. It was much different. There was no courtroom anything in this book. Like every other book that I've ever read from her has like a family drama and then a courtroom scene and it always deals with something that's prevalent in society. Like um, 19 Minutes was about school shootings. Um, Home Rules was about autism. Um, the Pact was about a suicide pact. Um, the Plain Truth was about the Amish. You know what I mean? Like. This was about the Holocaust, but there was no court scene, which I like her formula a little bit better. I mean, I'm going to law school, so I like the kind of court drama a little bit, but this was a phenomenal book. It was definitely up there in my top five of hers of all time. Great, great book, and I would highly, highly recommend this. So yeah, that is it for my entire review, and I'm sorry this video was long, but as always, please comment, thumbs up the video. If you read this book, let me know in the comments below. Um, if you have another book that you want to recommend to me, leave them in the comments below as well. I love knowing what other people are reading right now. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Please subscribe, and I will talk to you later. All right, bye.